Eric DaCosta said a lot in his press conference. There was uh, some political messages, but this kind of sums it up. Purposes. You know, I'll just call in a line from the Godfather and make him an offer we can't refuse. No, I mean. So, let's get to my thoughts. Baltimore Ravens coat. Purple trim, big right. body. Oh, because he went over a lot of things. We Ravens fans, Ravens flock. We know some of the questions from um, the media. Some can be good. Some can be like, really? We already know the answer to this. It's, come on. You're wasting a person's time. But I, I got a lot of um, points from this. It was a lot, a lot of subliminal messages like, like he's the godfather. Like he, he letting you know without letting you know. You know what I'm saying? You just can't give it out like that. And from this one, I'm going to go over. Okay, first, the cap. 15 to 20. That's what he said we pretty much have available is 15 to 20 million. And they still don't know where the cap is going to go. Um, for us, the numbers wise. So, with him saying offer, he can't refuse. He's referring to a wide receiver number one. So that's going to be interesting to see. But he did also say multiple. <laughs> he kept saying it where. Pretty much, he really didn't speak about the defense. Defense is fine. He spoke about, like, the pass rushing, everything like that. But he mainly kept speaking about the offense, where he said 150 to 160 thrown less than other teams. And he said he did notice the teams that – like Kansas City, um, that's like uh, Tampa Bay, they had a balanced offense. Yes, they're known for throwing, but they did run the ball good. So, he, in my opinion, he kept saying that, yes, we are a running team, but it should not be off that 150 160 that's a huge gap that's not even close to being balanced and he's noticed that so look pay attention that's what i believe he's saying to harbs and greg roman is like man okay because he said also he said he kept saying improving 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 which we know, obviously, we have to improve because we're still not playing right now. But he kept saying improving the offense, offensive line, which free agency and the draft, I believe that he's going to really, really work on that. He spoke about, uh, someone asked about Bozeman um, being like a center because that's what he used to do back in the day. And he's like, uh, it's a possibility, but he didn't guarantee that. And he didn't say anything else about the centers we do have. So I was like, okay, so we have no center right now. In my opinion, we have no center because both of them sucked. Without due respect, they sucked. Anyway, he, and then he also, right after that, he's like, we have to protect the quarterback. So I'm like, He's doubling down on on getting a better offensive line. So I'm really interested to see how he's going to do this. Are we going to first round pick possibly could be an offensive lineman for as a center or something like that? I wouldn't be surprised. Some teams have done it, and it works very well. We also have drafted late, and it works very well. So I don't, it's going to, you know, he's not going to give out what they have planned, but that's something 
we we gonna have to continually look out for also with him saying you know improving the coaching staff and things such as that he just kept saying balance he just kept saying balance 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 and he didn't he said he don't want to be one dimensional now he said earlier he said we are a running team but then right after he said that he mentioned that 150 to 160 thrown less than other teams that's not balance so with him saying don't want to be one dimensional all these subliminal messages about not being balanced he's putting that focus on harps he's let i believe this was so many shots at harps like hey this is it this is your year dude like you kept greg roman you ten toes down on that so if he does not improve you might be replaced and he gave props to harp saying he's a great leader and everything so he's believing like harp i believe you can do this but if it does not succeed i'm gonna have to put my foot down let him know where i might be like hey either you let this dude go because he's still one dimensional or it might be two people gone and we know Horace boy probably had to pull that trigger because i believe in the past that's what ozzy newsom had to do with harps was like okay same subliminal messages hey dude you cam cameron morning wig hey we they trash now we, we give them your time and you don't want to re release them and then he he released morning wig and marty and all that real fast with them subliminal messages so i believe this is year where might be great romans last year with us possibly hard you never know it was so many subliminal messages about that and then he also said, and like I said, it was all offense because he also said that if we are down 10 to 14 points, we should have a good passing attack. So even he's saying the passing scheme is vanilla, just like Kurt Warner, just like um, Steve Smith just like us Raven fans like how many and this was only what like a 55 minute press conference and he the, almost all the shots was going to the offense he said very little about the defense he said obviously offensive line got to improve we're gonna oh oh and also he talked about um Uh, what did he say? Uh, the yeah, he said um, the picks. We only have like five or six picks or something like that. So some people might be getting traded, and I'm very interested to see who's going to be getting traded because we are against the cap. And he said that because we have Judah, Bowser, and Yannick, uh, Mark Andrews coming up, Lamar obviously coming up. He said he's going to get with Lamar within 10 days because Lamar's out there in Florida right now. So that's going to be awesome. And Lamar signs that contract. I believe that will help out so they can know where they are for us financial wise. But like I said in one of my Twitter posts, I know Lamar might never see this, but I would say I'm not signing until Greg Roman is gone. That's me. That's what I would do. If that was, if that was my son, I'd be like, uh, little Ravensy, um, 
Don't sign that until they get you a better offense uh, offense coordinator. Ain't gonna have my. Psh, but anyway, anyway, let me let me calm down. Let me calm down. But he he oh man, it was just so many subliminal messages about the offense and like he because the chat was full of fire. Greg Roman, it was like trending like ridiculous over a thousand probably. Not ridiculous, but you know what I mean. Then he said he want to get younger, and that was speaking about um the release of uh Cox Morgan Cox the uh, long snapper. Uh, so it's only two Wolfpack members now, but he said it's about to get younger, and that that was interesting because I'm like, you want to get younger. But you don't want to get a younger offense coordinator, somebody at least from college, or you know, like a um, hey, hit up RG, be like, hey, are you interested? You're very intelligent, you're very smart, you played the quarterback position. Hey, the Cowgirls did it with their backup quarterback, that's their offense coordinator right now, and he, you know, like the Cowgirls, he's doing pretty good for them. When Dak is in there. So just think about if RG3 want to call the quits for us playing and want to be a offense coordinator. I believe with his experience, what he went through with people trying to tell him be a pocket quarterback and let and, and not just let him do his thing where if it's a run, it's if available, just go for it throw the ball, things like that, just play your style, I believe he'll be a good offense coordinator. But that's just me. It's, it's That's just me. You never, like, you just never know. Just never know that potential. But, and last but not least is he also talked about, and they asked him about number 29, Earl Thomas. And he he openly admit that, yes, I was wrong. I was looking for a leadership role type person. That's what we were looking for, for as a vet, to teach the young ones. And that flopped. And they're still doing their legal situation with that. But also with him saying that, that reminded me of, remember we was going back and forth with the AB and the Des Bryant, and he chose Des Bryant, and that's because of that leadership Des Bryant has. But it doesn't look like Des Bryant might not be coming back. I don't know. He put out them videos for the practice, and... That was a, that was shots at Greg Roman, but to me, it that was those could be positive shots. With me saying that is, it's like, dude, you're calling these plays in practice, which we're practicing a lot of these plays, but you're not calling them in the real game. These plays are working in practice against our number one. Against Marlon, against MP Juice Man, Chuck Joker, but you're not calling them in the actual game. And then they bring Dez out there and they really don't use them. Two, three plays a game, like what? But, and I believe that was all on Greg Roman. And Larry DeCosta was like, okay, I, I, I'm bringing in people to be a mentor, also to help. And you're not using them correctly. Man. Just. His so many subliminal messages toward the offense 
And I believe it's just really just straight Greg Roman. He's like, just kept jabbing, jabbing. And you know, you only get so many jabs, you'll end up like Connor. You'd be knocked out.